is Debian rusting out? Today we want to talk about the forced rust dependency in upcoming Debian releases. Will this have a major impact? Is this a horrible thing? Is this going to kill Debian as we know it? We'll go ahead and chat about this and what it means. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content, please subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave us a like and a comment down below. And today we do want to talk about the upcoming controversy from Debian, which uh, first was announced in um, uh, just on the November 1st here. And this is from a developer uh, from Julian Claude, who is a developer uh, in both Debian and in Ubuntu. And he writes that he plans to introduce a hard Rust dependency into apt no earlier than May 2026. And it extends to the Rust compiler and the standard library and the Sequoia ecosystem. So effectively, his, uh, uh, his approach here would say that we need more memory safe coding inside of applications which are parsing these important applications, DEBs, ARS, TARS, HTTP signature verifications. So it's a noble pursuit, but he says, if you maintain a port without a working Rust toolchain, please ensure it has one within the next six months. Uh, or the port will be sunset. So it's important for the project as a whole to be able to move forward and to rely on modern tools and technologies and not be held back trying to shoehorn modern software into retro computing devices. And that really is the controversy about it. And there's been some discussion back and forth and uh, really, without getting into a lot of the technicalities of it, uh, there's not as much debate on it. Like, like th there's definitely people hardly against this. And there's some discussion about that. And there is some reason why this might be problematic. Now, as they mentioned here in Pharonix, some of the Debian ports, like the more obscure M68K Hewlett Packard Precision Architecture, Super H, H, uh, SH4, and Alpha, uh, they have a fundamental problem is that even in the Rust documentation, those architectures are not even supported by Rust. Debian goes with a tagline, a universal operating system. And now the universal operating system wants to implement a hard dependency to several architectures that it currently supports that the dependency itself does not at all support. That is really what is at the fundamental question. Now, is this, however, a bunch of virtue signaling or is this... Uh, let's go ahead and move on. There are some fundamental questions about it. Of course, it's FOSS covered this as well. Not a lot of new information here. Everyone is basically just uh, recording articles based upon uh, the original release. Uh, it's actually the register article, I think, that had some of the best information in it. So we will lean on this one here. Again, they do quote his entire message, as we just said. There is a, um, a uh, clarifying message. He says, Rust is already a hard to requirement on all Debian release architectures and ports, except for <laughs> these four <laughs> that he mentions. Um, and so the point here is that he says that Debian already has a hard requirement except for these particular four. Now, here is the downside is it does appear that the developer is trying to suggest that, hey, these four architectures are no longer relevant at all. It's time to let them die. We are no longer going to support them. Well, what do we do in that circumstance? Well, we'd have to fork Debian into something else just to maintain these four architectures. Is it important to maintain these four architectures? Do we have any statistics about how many people use them? Are those systems, you know, critical systems somewhere or are they replaceable? Are they not being replaced because people are simply lazy and don't want to replace something? And uh, another good argument is why bother replacing something if it works? That's generally what my approach is. I mean, this computer was pretty cutting edge when I built it 10 years ago. And right now it's 
pretty low specs for my YouTube streaming and uh, video production computer. But you know what? It still works. And as long as components are still working, I'm not particularly in any hurry to go out and drop a whole bunch more money into something that I do not specifically need. Now, he says this explains two things. The small of them is that SQV is part of the Sequoia PGP project. Um, that is actually uh, something not, uh, I'm not sure if, he's, if it's just SH4 that doesn't support it or all four of those do not. Um, but the Sequoia PGP project is a Rust implementation of OpenPGP. And OpenPGP is very important, but uh, is Sequoia PGP as good? Is it going to work as well? Are people moving to this one because it's Rust or are they being forced on it? Does anybody care? Um, I didn't dig into that one as much. The larger those that Debian supports a lot more architecture, uh, processor architectures than Rust does. And this is a fundamental challenge that Rust itself does not support all these architectures. They have some tier one, which are the basics we all use every day, ARM64, i686, uh, and x86-64. And so... Those between those three architectures, I would say is easily 90, if not 95 plus percent of all computers out there. How do you handle that last 5%? That really is the fundamental question. The other four of them that officially supports, these are the ones, um, well, I guess these are part of those. These ones actually were not all in it. ARMHF, P uh, PPC 64EL, RISC uh, 64, and S390X are tier two Rust platforms, they should be all right, but they might need work. Now, these are ones that Debian currently supports that Rust does support, but I, you know, have they put it in there because it's not, it's not really suggested that they're going to work really well. So that's a fundamental question. This leaves 11 unofficial but supported platforms that are not high class Rust citizens. Debian ports for uh, these ones we mentioned earlier. There's actually a bunch of them there. Uh, Rust has tier two support for Lungsan and Spar C64. They may survive unscathed. Um, Big Ending Power PC is tier three, which means it might be possible with substantial work. So that one's dead, most likely. And then there is um, uh, there are some other ones that uh, ultimately will probably end up dying. And that really is the fundamental question. So another thing to keep in mind here, as they point out, is uh, was it here or was it in a comment? I can't remember if it's in here or is it in a comment, but the Linux kernel itself is going to be, yeah, right down here. Uh, the Linux kernel itself is going to be losing support for 32 bits. So maybe it's a moot point. Are any of those not 32 bit that those will be dropped by the Linux kernel soon anyway? So I think what's going on here, if I have my guess, having read all of these articles, considered what's going on, we do know this, that Rust implementation itself has become, for some weird reason, a political push. Maybe it's because the Biden White House suggested everyone uses Rust and therefore Rust is of the devil. I don't know. Okay, um, I've chosen long ago while having a high aptitude for computer programming, I chose not to go into computer programming. I've learned four or five computer programs in my years and um, Rust is not one of them. Uh, I do know that while it's hailed as the golden child of solving several bugs, it also introduces a lot of major bugs, like that whole Ubuntu 2510 can't upgrade to that thing without trashing your computer. That was Rust. So Rust is not this bulletproof system. It just seems to solve the memory problems better than C. But if you're a competent programmer, you won't have many memory problems in C. So there's always that. So is Rust just a programming language for our modern age of people who lack competency that our future generations or excuse me, our past generations have had? Or is this something else? Are people mad about it just because it's Rust and Rust is closely associated with Wayland and the whole group over there causing a political rife, which is stupid. We shouldn't be doing that. We should be looking at this going, you know what? As long as the systems work, we should be fine. Is this, for me, a deal breaker for Debian? I 
personally don't think so. I am going to imagine that the Linux kernel support for those uh, for those architectures might run out before Debian does. And we will still have a number of years left because remember, this is Debian. Debian moves about as fast as a glacier. It is one of the earliest Linux families we have, and we just released 13. Okay, that's how slow this thing moves. And so looking at the support, uh, Bullseye support, uh, this was released four years ago in 2021 when we were all locked down, you know, and uh, it is still supported until August of 2026, which is 10 months away. That's a long time. Debian 12, which you know, has what that was released two years ago in 2023. That one is still good until 2028. And the current one released Trixie 13 just released three months ago. This will be going along until, um, computers like until nobody owns anything anymore. So here's actually the, the chart. I apologize. I thought I had that on the screen. Uh, but, uh, uh Trixie here has, uh, uh, this will end support in June 30th of 2023. And by then we will own nothing and be happy. So what does it matter? We will have entered, uh, interdissociated Nirvana with utopia. Um, no, in all seriousness though, um, what this type, this hard dependency on Rust is not going to be backported into the current versions of Debian. This is for Debian 14, which will not come out until 2020. Uh, let's see, 2027 is when this is going to come out. Even when it comes out, you will still be able to run those supported architectures until 2030. That's five more years. So, how many? individual systems is this going to impact that is good information that we don't have is this a deal breaker no because the reality is if there is enough people still running those old systems and to be frank if you're using any of those old systems you probably have the competency to port it keep it going air gap it or do whatever else you need to do to keep that thing moving along. In fact, I'm going to be willing to bet that if you're just using that system because it's already there and it's working, you probably haven't updated it for a while anyway, most likely. I'm just throwing out random guesses here, but the reality is this is something that is not even going to be relevant for the modern society for two more years. And the current version, which was, will still be supported is still viable for five more years. So to me, this is kind of a, let's not fight about it. I don't think this is as big of a deal. However, I can understand why some people might get mad in the midst of it. All being said, Debian is probably not going anywhere. And I don't see this as as big of an issue as some people have made it out to be. But hey, I'm not a Rust developer and I'm not particularly a, um, a at least not a desktop Debian user a lot, you know, I mean, I, I use Debian for my servers preferentially, but I don't use Debian in the desktop a lot. So uh, let me know how wrong I am in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.